Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. I'm Mark Iorio, co-host, the Yolkster, Lisa Manyoki, <laughs> and our good friend, Dr. Uh, Gerald H. Smith, again with us. Uh, good morning, Doc. Good morning to you, too. And How are you? As they say in Iowa, happy is a pig knee deep in slop. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't have a result of, uh, of our presidential election, but uh, hopefully soon, right? It's looking good. I, it is. Yeah. It is. Great to have you back. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about concussions today. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, in the world of sports especially, right, concussions are, they're out there, prolific. Hockey, football. Mm -hmm. Even basketball, baseball, you get hit in the face a lot of times, right? Um, how many cases of concussions are there well, in the I, U.S.? When I did the research, uh, 1.7 to 3 million concussions a year. And what's you know, really unnerving was that they said 50% of concussions are not reported. Why not is that? reported. Why Whoa, is that? Yeah. Well, I think people just kind of like shrug it off and say, you know, I'll be okay. I'm not going to go and get evaluated. Remember, remember back in uh, before concussions were huge in, in the NFL, especially. You know, you got hit. You know, you get knocked Shook out, him. right? And and it, you were considered wimpy if you didn't go back in the game, right? But now, after after all these years, a lot of research has been done. Well, you know, it's fascinating. Um, I, years ago, I did a radio show and we interviewed Dr. Bennett Amalu, who was the uh, pathologist uh, and the neuropathologist. And he's the one that discovered that, uh, and especially in Mike Webster's case from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. who committed suicide, yeah. um, the reason he actually dissected his brain and he found this tall protein, which was in the areas of trauma. And from my perspective, uh, I don't believe that that's the actual cause of the problem. I believe it's a reaction of the lack of oxygen, lack of blood circulation, lack of nutrients getting in, and the swelling, mm -hmm. and the and the brain tissue breaks down and it forms this tall protein. Yeah. Um, what, what happens actually during during a uh, a violent hit or impact on your on your brain, Doc? What's what's going on? Well, you get what they call as a contra coup. So if you get hit in the back of the head, your brain goes forward and especially the frontal lobe, the cortex is your executive uh, function of your brain, mm -hmm. smacks into the skull and uh, it, it causes a bruise, maybe even some minor bleeding in there and you get swelling. Well, when you get swelling, you're decreasing the circulation into the brain. So the brain can't work properly because it's not getting oxygen, nutrients, and the waste products can't get out. So that's basically what's happening. Well, is it swelling throughout yeah. or just in the well, areas of impact? It, it starts in that area, but you know, the brain's encased in the hard right. shell and there's not much room for it. So any little bit of swelling is going to put pressure. Yeah. Wow. You, um, you have an interesting story about a uh, gentleman who came to you after many years of, of dealing with pain from, from a concussion, I would imagine? Absolutely. Uh, it was a very interesting story. In 1995, Andrew Adams was at a college hockey game, sitting front row. Two players collided, and a 65-pound pane of glass came out of its supports and hit him in the head. Yeah. Unfortunately... Um, he, he took him four and a half months to get back to work. Wow. Yeah, and he went to the Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins, University of Pennsylvania, top neurologist. Nobody could fix him. And he could tell you two days in advance when it was going to rain because his head headaches got escalated to like a nine or ten. Yeah. Normal day, no less than a three. And when it rained, he had to crawl into a dark room in bed. He was in excruciating pain. That's horrible. All right, so it was headaches. That was his main complaint, that they were just persistent and continual? Persistent, you know, just chronic headaches. And uh, 21 years, nine months. Wow. We have a video clip of, uh, of him, right? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. Yeah. Hi, my name's Andrew Adams. Um, I had a head injury back in December of 95, a severe concussion. It actually um, kept me out of uh, work and everything for four and a half months. Um, I've been through the gamut of all different types of medications and procedures that doctors have tried over the years. I've been to different headache centers and 
different neurologists. Um, so after a while, nothing did anything. So these headaches were 24 seven um, a day for the past 21 and a half years. Um, I came to see Dr. Smith a week ago and um, now it's been seven days and I'm basically headache free. It's, um, it's absolutely amazing to me for something that's gone on for so long in my life to have it gone. Um, and, you know, I came in this morning with minor neck pain from just twisting it, and he fixed that, and now I have no headache. And that's the first time in 21 years. Wow. You know what's interesting? Yeah. He said the hardest thing for him to deal with was not being in pain, psychologically. Oh, Because he was, like, frightened that is it going to come back. Yeah. What did you, what exactly did you do? Well, I have a specialty of uh, cranial manipulation that I learned from osteopaths and chiropractors. Yeah. And basically, um, from a graphic standpoint, the base of your skull, which is made up of your occiput, the back of your head, and yeah. the sphenoid bone, when you breathe in, it goes up into flexion. When you exhale, it goes in extension. So inhale, exhale. When you get traumatized, that motion literally gets reversed. So when you breathe in, it goes this way instead of this way. It pulls a dural tube from around your brain all the way down your spine to your sacrum. So it's affecting your whole central and autonomic nervous system. Wow. Yeah. And so when I fixed it, uh, in 1983, I had the good fortune of meeting this chiropractor, uh, Cleo Bloodworth from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And he taught me this concept that he kind of like discovered on the roof of your mouth, there's a vomer bone. It's a vertical bone. So I do a release on the whole cranium. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. And one of my last procedures is literally pressing up on the vomer bone to reset the pump of your skull. It's non-invasive, doesn't hurt. Wow. And I'm telling you, I have a, a whole uh, website devoted to concussion. It's called concussionreverse.com. Yeah. And we've had some really miraculous results. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. What are the typical treatment modalities for, for concussion? Well, uh, hyperbaric oxygen, um, up in Toronto, they did research and they showed uh, mild concussions, even 12 years out, can respond to a hyperbaric. Uh, they also use some electrical stimulation and, um, you know, nutritional therapy, that type of thing. But in my um, clinical experience, if you don't reset the basic pumping mechanism, all these other things are just like, uh, you know, uh, smoke and mirrors, right, basically. Right, exactly. Uh, uh, describe a little bit more about this pumping mechanism. How does that? Well, if you hold your breath, Lisa, your brain expands and contracts. It's pumping the cerebral spinal fluid around the brain, okay. even though you're holding your breath. It's called a primary respiratory motion. Mm -hmm. And when you get traumatized, it reverses the motion and it affects you physiologically and psychologically. Yeah. You know, you, some of the symptoms, of course, is a cognitive dysfunction where sure. you can't think, um, blurred vision, nausea, uh, bruising, um, uh, sleep deprivation because, you, you know, your nervous system's agitated your adrenals, yeah. uh, lack of coordination, uh, slurred speech. And these are just some of the common symptoms that people experience. Could it focus in memory too? It can oh, absolutely. That, right? Well, it's interesting. The sphenoid bone has the attachment of pretty much all the muscles of the eye with the exception of two. And when the sphenoid bone gets distorted, the muscles to your eye change their physiologic length and it distorts the shape of your lens of your eye. So that's why visual stuff goes haywire. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about reversing the the concussion, reversing concussions in, in, a, uh, in a person who's been traumatized in some way. How do you go through the typical diagnosis? What's that look like? I mean, well, from a clinical perspective, um, this Dr. Bloodworth taught me back in 1983, um, you put your hands under the base of the occiput and you ask them to take a deep breath. And if their skull is balanced, the occiput drops down. Because think about it, if this is your occiput and you breathe in and it goes into flexion, you watch where my knuckles are, it goes down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put your hands behind her and they breathe in and it goes this way, the occiput comes up. Oh, it's yeah. a simple you know, you know, evaluation. Yeah. And you pick it up in 10 seconds or less.
Wow. So how often would you have to repeat this treatment? Like you say, this gentleman left your office after 21 years of discomfort, and then he left pain-free. Does he have to continue with you, or? And that's the interesting thing. It'll hold until you get whacked by a two-by-four. <laughs> so wow. in other words, what I'm saying is the human body is designed to be self-correcting mechanism. Yep. And, and if you look at your teeth, every time you swallow, which is two to three times a minute, mm -hmm. they come together. And if your bite is balanced, it literally resets your cranial bones. So it's a self-correcting mechanism. So if you have a malocclusion and your body's kind of like holding Humpty Dumpty together with Band-Aids, right. and then you get <laughs> trauma, you can't, you can't recuperate. Right. Because I've exactly. had that with patients where this one woman was thrown f from her horse, chronic neck pain, facial pain, in the hospital for 10 days on uh, narcotics. When she came to me, I bonded resins on her teeth to give her vertical support. Well, six months later, and I was still treating her because I was doing orthodontics, but six months later she got thrown from her horse. Nothing happened. No kidding. Because when you reset the balance yeah. of the skull and the muscles and you get traumatized, your body has a baseline of stability and the muscles just heal. Mm. When, you, when you look at sports, and we were talking about this earlier uh, off the air, but when you look at sports like football or hockey or uh, high rugby contact sports, really, you right. know, hard-hitting sports, and you look at, let's pick on the NFL for a second, right? Because a lot of the research that came out from, from Webster and that concussion movie, and then beyond that, uh, Lyle Alzado, all the people that had concussions that ended up either committing suicide or dying, that uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, uh, encephalopathy, yeah. help me out there. Encephalopathy is fine. Encephalopathy, yeah. okay. Um, is is something that there's do, they're doing a lot of research on, but then why do they put it aside? They don't want anybody to know that concussions are potentially hazard, hazardous, hazardous to your health, or well, what's going on there? I have to share this with you. I met with the uh, New Jersey alumni, NFL alumni, uh, probably a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and a good friend of mine, He's literally a rocket scientist. This guy has a PhD in engineering, an MD degree, yeah. and he worked for NASA for 15 years. He's not your run-of-the-mill guy. Yeah. He and I made a proposal to the NFL Alumni Association about doing a pilot study with these uh, NFL players that you know post-concussion problems. Uh, to our dismay, what we discovered is that, well, if you're part of a billion dollar lawsuit against the NFL, why would you want to get healed? Think about that. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. Seriously, it's, it's distorted. Yeah, it and, is. But this was the reality of it. These guys didn't want to get healed because then they're going to lose, you know, they'll probably get maybe three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in a settlement. Instead of billions. Wow. It, it's scary that it people scary. have that mentality, really but that's is. the way it's it is. A, it's a strange mentality. Wow. Well, there's, let me ask you something. I know when my son played ice hockey and lacrosse, they became very proactive in the high schools to do a baseline. So are they accurate? I mean, are you familiar with them? No. They would do, didn't they do them with Christopher, where they, they did a baseline for, they took some measurements, some metrics. And then if they had a, a... Oh, they can compare against... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like any baseline test. And then if they got hit in the head or they had some type of trauma, they would do some cognitive testing and whatnot so they could compare and say, hey, you know, you, you're out for a while. They then came out with these concussion helmets for ice hockey. Now, would, would steps like that be a step in the right direction? Or is it well, smoke and mirrors or according what? According to Dr. Bennett Amalu, he said... <laughs> Anyone playing contact sports like football, you're guaranteed 100% to get concussion, no matter what the helmets are. Uh, the, one of the big problems, too, is that they're not using natural anti-inflammatories to reduce the swelling, because that's where the, the damage comes in. The longer you have swelling in the brain, the more damage you're going to have to the, yeah. mm -hmm. to, to the neurons and everything. So there's things like bromelain and pineapple, which is a natural anti-inflammatory. Sure. Food-based vitamin C, uh, not ascorbic acid. That's not vitamin C. That's only the antioxidant fraction. Yeah. But uh, Indian gooseberry has the highest concentration of natural vitamin C of any food. 
It's anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, curcumin. It's in turmeric. Oh, it's yeah. a herb that actually has shown to restore uh, cognitive function in the brain and concentration. And it's a herb and it's anti-inflammatory. Yeah. See, th the answers are out there, and it's non-invasive, and it's not really expensive to, to take these things. What is Indian gooseberry? I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> Where do you find a gooseberry, you know? You have to go to India. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a, it's a, a, a substance, uh, and uh, we have a company that we uh, buy it from, and um, you know, one of the patients made a very interesting comment to me. I was treating him for chronic fatigue from metal toxicity. And four months later, he comes back. He says, Doc, I, I finally get it. I said, well, what do you get? He said, the supplements that you use are like Sunoco racing fuel. He says, I've been treated by many, many doctors and no results. He said, but the stuff you're giving me, I'm getting results. That's a good way to put it. It really is. Because a lot of times, you know, you see these supplements, you go to a, either a health store or you go to a regular grocery store or a supermarket, and if you read the ingredients on the back, they're really not pure anything. Mm. You know, there's a mixture of so much in there. I, well, it's what, pure synthetics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so th there's, you, you had a no, question No, I was going to say, how often, is this a daily regimen where you take these supplements, or is it just episodic after no, you've had trauma? I would recommend, especially if you're playing sports, if you take it on a regular basis, it's going to help you, um, you know, reduce any inflammation that you get. Because look, just playing a sport, you get metabolic waste products from your muscles. Mm -hmm. That helps to counteract that. So, I mean, I take it every day. Is a it, this is an insurance policy that I don't have to die to recuperate. You know. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so last week we talked about uh, underactive thyroid, right? So what's the correlation um, or impact between hyperactive thyroid or un under, right? Active, yeah. Underactive thyroid well, and, and concussion? Anytime you traumatize the body, you're stressing out the thyroid, the adrenals, you know, the whole system. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's all interconnected. It's not like an isolated, uh, you know, cup of coffee sitting on the, the tabletop. Uh, you know, like I would tell people, you know, your foot and your mouth are connected. They say, how? I said, well, if I dropped a hundred pound weight on your foot, you think your mouth's not going to move? <laughs> so, you know, uh, people are stressed out enough, you know, the chlorine, fluoride, bromine, adulterated oils, they're all suppressing your thyroid. Now, if when the weather turns cold, like now, mm -hmm. uh, that's increasing thyroid function. Well, if it just doesn't have the get up and go, you get more fatigue, you get uh, constipation, mental fog, you know, acne, hair falling out. These are all common symptoms. Wow. You know, in the medical industry, I, you know, I'm sitting here and every week we're more and more fascinated. I mean, you become our medical expert at uh, RVN TV and, and we talk about so many different, um, you know, issues with whether it's cancer, whether it's anxiety, uh, depression, panic attacks. Uh, concussion. Mm. Y you are so well read. You have such a thirst for knowledge and understanding of what happens and what transpires in the human body. Do you think, I mean, this is a, you know, a, a question that it might be difficult to answer, Doc, but do you think there's other people in the medical field that have that burning desire to learn how the body heals itself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, if they have too many good answers, they get knocked off. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, uh, you go back to the 1920s, uh, William F. Koch. He's mm -hmm. a guy that literally discovered that cancer is not a disease, it's an adaptation. Mm -hmm. He developed this compound called glyoxylide. Well, they harassed him for 50 years and they finally killed him over in Rio de Janeiro in 1967. Um, this is not an isolated incident. Yeah. It's unfortunate. They don't want uh, treatments yeah. that are non-invasive, that are less expensive and work. Look, same thing with COVID. Didn't they trash uh, hydroxychloroquine? Immediately. Immediately, yeah. why? It's four cents a pill, 60 years track record sure. that it works. There's no real adverse side effects. Right. But their whole agenda was to vaccinate everybody. Well, if you take uh, hydroxychloroquine and you get cured, then you don't need the vaccine. Right, exactly, yeah. 
And I find that to be the case in so many, so many instances with, with medicine, modern medicine. Well, another perfect example, the guy that uh, was an uh, Australian physician discovered that a uh, Heliobacter pylori that caused ulcers. They wanted to crucify this guy, take his license away. But when they found out that he was using antibiotics to treat the problem, oh, he was a hero. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so wow. who's the they? The they, Big Pharma. Oh. Big Pharma, the AMA. Yeah, the American Medical Association. Yeah, uh, no, it's American Mafia Association. Oh, you sorry, got sorry, that incorrect. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I'm I tell it like it is. Yeah. Let me tell you, um, when you look back at history, you'll see the cures were out there and they were all suppressed. In fact, these people are so criminal. In the 30s, um, they uh, set up a guy, uh, Morris Fishbein, who was the head of the AMA. Mm -hmm. One of his jobs, was to prevent any natural research from being listed in the index medicus. So in other words, if you were a researcher and you're trying to find answers, if there's other alternative approaches, it wasn't listed and it was done purposely. Wow. Mm. Your office is over in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, right? And Correct. There's, there's, you know, we live in you know, Bucks County, Mercer County, Burlington County, big football, big hockey, big lacrosse area. Uh, if your child or one of your uh, friends has suffering from a concussion, you got to go see Dr. Smith. I mean, it's right. It, it, you know, we get to a point a lot of times where you don't know how to treat things. And, and you mentioned this before we went on the air, Doc. You know, when you when you treat things as though let's let's take a car, for example, and you see a rut, rust in the corner of your uh, uh, one of your fenders, you don't paint it. Right? Or you don't have your mechanic cut it out either. Yeah. 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 Right, exactly. You have to go to a, a specialist for that. Get right? it fixed. Well, you know, another perfect example had a young woman uh, six years ago, would be December, flying from Trinidad from actually the island Tobago. 20 years severe migraine headaches. She had two concussions and three whiplash injuries. Prescribed every pain medication that's in the physician's desk reference. Yeah. 20 years. Okay. She got referred to me. I adjusted her head one time, headaches totally disappeared, never came back in six years. Wow. Then this is from migraines? Yeah. Now, now I'm not headache prone in general, but I, I know if you I can people... give headaches if you want. Oh, free of charge. <laughs> free of charge. That's, that's <laughs> a bonus. That's a, thank you so much. I'll yeah, you okay. <laughs> However, I mean, I know some people, they are debilitating. I mean, the dark in the room. I had a roommate in college who she'd say, I'm going to get one. And that meant she had this small window of time where she had to go to a dark room, silence everything, and just wait, and then wait for it to pass. But she couldn't move for a day. Oh, so. yeah. Well, there's, there's only about 400 different reasons that can cause headaches. Uh, you could have a hormone imbalance. And that can trigger off, especially if females, uh, you get an estrogen dominance that can cause a problem. You could have a tyramine sensitivity from any fermented foods or wine, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a patient you know, who had headaches for years and that's what it turned out to be. Um, you could have, a, there was a book by Phil Pot and Kalita uh, called Brain Allergy. So you may be sensitive to chicken, that can cause your brain to swell and cause headaches. Interesting. Yeah, there's so many different potential mm -hmm. causes. Dentistry, okay, you have a bad bite mm -hmm. and it, it torques your head, that can trigger off headaches. Yeah. Yeah. Mercury fillings, mercury leaks out 24 7, that can cause. I had a guy who had 25 years migraine headaches, and about 30 years ago, I took out all his mercury fillings. And one month later, his 25 years of migraines totally disappeared. Mercury fillings, can you imagine? I mean, think about that. I've for got a, a mouthful of them. Not mercury, I hope. No, whatever's uh, in there. Yeah, yeah. but seriously, uh, there were like three mercury wars with the American. Uh, uh, Dental Association, and in fact, the original system was set up was a New York uh, Dental Association, yeah. and when you became a member, you had to sign a statement that you would not put mercury fillings in the people. Wow. The, the dentists that got caught and got thrown out, they formed an association, it was called the American Dental Association, wow. where they put mercury fillings in people's teeth. Oh my. Now, when did they stop doing that? They're still doing it. Oh. Oh yeah, there's still dentists that are using it. It's it's the second most toxic substance on this planet, besides uh, you know your. Is it in the amalgam? The, yeah, they... it's 50 percent mercury. Oh, it is. Amalgam, yeah, and it leaks out 24/7. Wow, crazy. Doc, if you were to if you were to uh, tell our audience what um, you know if you if your child or 
or one of your friends or whatever is suffering from a concussion, what would you what would you say to them? Well, the best thing to do is get evaluated conventionally, mm -hmm. make sure that there's no major physical damage, mm -hmm. um, and then you know come and see me because the structural components. There's very few people on the planet that even know this stuff exists. Yeah. Mm. So. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. Great, great, again, great episode. I love talking to Dr. Smith. Yeah, and, these, and the concussion topic you is learn, near you and dear. Do you learn anything when we talk to him? Always. Me too. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back uh, after our commercial message with more morning coffee.